Uh, okay, so I'll go over the uh, problems. So for the first problem, we have this rod that looks like uh, this, points A and B. Uh, it has mass M, length L, and so there's another mass M here that strikes the B with velocity of V. And so we want to find this minimum V such that the bar will rotate all the way around A. Okay, so, uh, okay, so basically uh, we can first apply uh, conservation of energy here. So we have this uh, one half mv squared, that's the kinetic energy, obviously. And uh, this will be equal to mlg plus one half i omega squared. This is because like afterward, the, it's what part of the rotation of kinetic energy, a part of the energy is the rotation of kinetic energy, which is one half I omega squared. And there's also this new mass here, uh, which is M, uh, the new mass M we're putting. While the mass of the rod from before, they're all the same, so we don't need to worry about that. So yeah, basically this uh, is the equation for the energy, I believe. And then we also can use a uh, conservation of angular momentum. Uh, I omega is equal to mlv. Uh, this one is pretty easy to see. Before the angular momentum is just mlv, obviously, and afterwards it's I omega. So then uh, here, the moment of inertia I is equal to, uh, well, the more, moment of inertia of like a normal. I used femur today. Huh? Oh, wait, oops. Why am I unmuted? Oops, sorry about that. I said nothing. Uh, okay, so basically, sorry. it's uh, one third ml squared. This is like the uh, moment of inertia for a normal rod around the end. And then there's this other mass m here. So then it's just plus m o squared. This is equal to four thirds m o squared. Okay, so then uh, this means that uh, we can plug this into the second equation. And this gives us uh, four thirds uh, m o squared omega is equal to m l b. So then uh, omega is equal to 3b over 4l. Uh, okay. So then uh, we can uh, we can plug this back into the first equation when we get that, uh, let's see, one half mv squared is equal to mlg plus uh, one half of uh, four thirds m l squared times uh, this v squared, which is nine over sixteen times uh, v squared over l squared. Okay, so then we uh, we uh, raise some stuff, and then we can get that uh, this is of course equal to MLG plus, um, uh, it's equal to MLG plus one half of this cancels, we get three eighths M uh, V squared. So then uh, now it's, the, it's pretty simple from here, we get one eight M V squared, is equal to MLG. So then obviously V is just equal to a, a square root A L D. And that is the final answer for number one. Uh, does anyone have any questions about this problem? 
I think everything is clear at this moment because I'm. I'll give an answer because no one else is talking. Okay. Okay, so then I'll do the second problem then. So for the second problem, we have, let me see. Uh, here we have this uh, cylinder that looks like this. And there's some stuff in it. It's filled with argon. And it has a spring here. Uh, with spring constant K. Uh, what else? Yeah, these two lengths are both L zero. And then um, the pressure at equilibrium, this pressure is at, uh, this pressure is P zero. And the spring is compressed by uh, length X zero. And so we want to find the angular frequency omega of the small oscillations. Okay, so uh, to do this problem, first we want to find the force. Obviously, this is like pretty, uh, yeah, that's just like what we always do for these spring problems. The force, uh, it's just the pressure times the area. Uh, for this is the force on. Uh, pressure times the area uh, minus the force from the spring Kx. Uh, yeah, because this pressure is pushing this way while the spring is compressed, so it goes that way. Yeah. Okay, so now, um, well, we know that the, uh, so we can see from this ideal gas law, PV equals nRT. Uh, the right hand side um, remains constant because uh, obviously NR is constant and it says that it's uh, isothermal, I believe. Yeah, that says that, that the gas compresses isothermally. So that means T remains constant. So PV is also constant. So then this would just be equal to P0, V0, which is like the um, a one in the a, at the beginning of this scenario. So then we can see that uh, V is equal to L0 plus X times A. So then uh, that, that means that P is just equal to P0, V0 over L0 plus X. Okay, so now uh, L zero plus x times a, that, and so now we can uh, try to approximate this. So one over L zero plus x. This can be written as uh, one over one plus uh, x over L zero, then times one over L zero. And this one, since x is much smaller than L0, then we can just approximate this part. And the approximation for this is uh, one minus X over L0. And this is probably something that you should know. And then of course we divide by L0 and we get uh, L0 minus X over uh, L0 squared. Okay, so then, we go back to our uh, equation for the force here. Um, so then F is, of course, equal to, uh, it's equal to P A, and this would be P zero of V zero times uh, uh, over this. So like times L zero minus X over, L zero squared times A. And then we also need to multiply this by A. And then minus Kx, that's of course, uh, same expression from before. Uh, of course, the A cancels out. And so we get this uh, part of, yeah. So then we get this P zero times V zero over L zero minus X 
over L squared minus Kx. But since we want to find the uh, angular frequency, omega, uh, we only care, we want to write this as like F equals like K over M times X, something like that, basically. And then that uh, square root K over M is just omega. So then we just want to write this F as something times X. And so in this case, we can just ignore the constants. And so we get uh, something like this, uh, P zero, B zero X over uh, L squared and minus a uh, plus K actually, since they're both negative. So then uh, we can simplify this further because V, uh, this is equal to uh, P zero times, uh, uh, this is equal to P zero times L zero A X because V is just equal to L times A over L zero squared and then plus K X. And so this is just, we can cancel this out and we get uh, P zero times A over L zero plus K times X. So now we get this uh, F as a equals something times X form that we want. So now it should be, it's pretty simple for now. Uh, omega is just equal to square root of this part, which would just be P zero times uh, A over L zero plus K. So yeah, that's the answer to number two. Uh, okay, does anyone have any questions about this problem? Uh, okay, so it appears that Noah has any questions. So yeah, um, that's uh, my part.